Okay, so let's let's begin. So first, we're going to need to create a uh, texture. Now I've already got a texture pre-built for me. I'm going to be showing you today uh, some of the work that I've been doing for tabletop games on a game called Sure Footing. Now we rely heavily on normal maps for this. Um, because our models are quite basic, they are cubes, uh, cuboids, uh, we need to create a lot of detail in the actual texture. And the way we do this is using a normal map. Now one way to do this would be to create a very high detailed model and bake that information down to the low poly. Now this takes time to create this sort of detail. So what Endo allows us is to create very, very quick texture sets for our characters. Now our characters have a lot of costumes. Pete has something like 46 costumes or 30 costumes. I might be exaggerating a little bit there. So time is quite important and trying to create high poly versions for each of these character sets is just a no go. We tried it, it didn't work. So we decided to switch to something called Endo and this is what I'm covering today. Now to begin with um, what I'm going to show you is how you can create normal map detail using the marquee tool. Now the marquee tool is this here. So we just click on this button here and it allows me to drag out a selection. Okay. And that will come a bit more apparent in a minute. So firstly, I'm just going to open up Quixel. And this is what comes up. So this is Endo, this is Dedo, and this is 3DO. Now 3DO is a viewer, 3D viewer, so you can actually look at your models in using the 3DO viewer and have a look and see how the models look in there. And I'll show you that in a bit. But to begin with, what we need to do is we need to press Endo. Okay, now parts of this tutorial I'm going to speed up because I don't think you want to see me. It's going to take me a good 10, 20 minutes to make this. So I'm going to speed bits of this tutorial up to show you uh, the end results. So to begin with, what I need to do is I'm just going to unlock this. And this is what you get when you load up Endo. Now, as long as it doesn't crash, we have our options here and I'll go into more detail of these later on when I've actually got a normal map we can we can change we can actually convert these into AO maps so to begin with what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the endo project inside of this target so I'm going to find what I need so I'm going to convert I need to select these so if I go into select and go to color range I can actually select that color range and if I click OK it will give me a selection of that hue of color which is really important um, to uh, understand that because it's going to save you a lot of time when selecting colors okay so we've got that I'm going to double check to make sure everything's alright because you never know it might might be different and now you can see this has changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the edge selection and convert it into a normal map. And I'm just going to click. I'm going to make sure I've got a new layer. Before you do any of this, make sure you've got a new layer. And then click. OK. So that's actually converted our normal into our normal map. Now you can see it hasn't damaged the layer below because we created a new layer. If I turn this off, if we turn this layer off, we can see underneath, okay? But be wary, you need to turn that back on before you save it out. Now this is our options. So we've got size, depth, contrast, opacity, and softness. So we can change this. So if I change this to four, maybe three, okay? We can also change the depth of it. As you can see there, it changes the depth. We can also change how much we see of it, so the opacity. We can also change the softness, which makes it either round, round, or harder on the edges. We can also change the bevel, so we can have outer, emboss, 
groove, so it has a groove around it. I'm going to keep it as inner. We can also change the slant to up or down, so we can go down, inwards, or outwards. Okay. Now you can play around more with all the other ones. I tend to keep these quite simple because um, of how fast I need to get these done. So let's try another selection. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to go to select, color range. I'm going to do it on this now. Click OK. Now it's selected all of this color. So we can do the same. So enable that, click on that, and there you go. You just bring this down to two, three. And you can see it's created this based off the normals. So based off your selection, it will create the normals. Okay, now I'm going to just do this one more time. So let's go to select, color range, and I'm going to select this color here. Now, as you can see, it's selected a color. We don't want to do this bit yet. So if you hold Alt and left click, while still being on this selection here, on the marquee selection, Alt and drag, gets rid of your selection so this is no longer selected. Now another thing we want to do is can you see how small these are? We want it to be around this really dark area here. So if we go up to select, modify, expand. Now this allows us to modify it by so many pixels. So as you can see by expanding it by two pixels we get a very good circle and we get a more solid build. Now what I would do is I would expand it by another another pixel. So it's three pixels in total. Now this sort of thing is experiment to see what, what you're going to do. But modify is a really good way to expand your selections or contract your selections as well so you can shrink them. Now if we turn that back on and go... As you can see as well, I'm always selecting this top layer. Now. We can rename these. But I'm always selecting, never select any of these outside ones and never delete this structure because if you do, it starts to crash. So making sure that's the thing. And if, you, if in doubt, just go Control, Control Shift N, create a new layer and you can start from there. So let's have a look at the buttons layer and let's sort this out. So now one thing we might want to do is actually add a groove to it. Okay, so you've got this nice groove. I mean, that might be a bit too much. We could do an outer or we could do an inner. And this is about experimenting. Okay, so I've softened it so we get that nice smooth button effect. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the rest of it using that same method of selection. Um, and then we'll come back to it and see what we've got.
Now what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing Alt and what that allows me to do is just drag a copy of that folder of that group and pop it over and again I'm just going to draw another marquee here I'm going to hold shift to add to my selection and again I'm just going to click on this and because these are the same I can do the same I can just press alt and drag it and if you hold shift you can hold it in position so if you make a mistake I can just drag it holding holding shift to make sure it drags sideways and holding alt to get rid of the selection so here you can see if I was to do that if I hold alt it gets rid of it or shift to add to the selection once you've got it selected and again I'm just gonna as you can see here yeah that's screwed up okay so we've made an error because it says a copy inside of it it won't actually work so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to delete it and try that one again. And I'll layer it. Okay. So that's roughly how you do it. Okay, so this is one way of doing it using selections, expanding selections, contracting selections, using the marquee tool, and also using uh, the magic wand tool, which is this one here. You can start to build up quite detailed parts of the normal map okay if I turn this back on you can start to see this start to gather a lot of detail now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward and go into a bit of a blue Peter moment and show you what it looks like once I've done the whole thing <laughs> 